everybody. <laughs> Today we are going to speak to Chris Matchen, who is an international HR specialist and he has done many things in his career and has lots of great advice. So let's find out. My answer is probably not very satisfactory. My, what I observe out there at the moment is it's so hard. Mm. I'd chase everything. Okay. It used to be, the advice I would have given 15 years ago is very different. It would be to be really targeted, mm. really disciplined. So, and, th and this is true. If you love sport, you target Nike and Reebok and Adidas and Puma and blah, blah, blah. That's what you do. And, and you should. Yeah. But these days, I just wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket. The, 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 the world has spread so thinly. Mm -hmm. You know, so the big corporates used to, used to take 200 graduates a year on. They're now taking 20. Yeah. So you've just got to kiss lots more frogs than you ever used to have to. I would chase absolutely everything. And then I'd love the one that you're with. Okay. I, I would fall in love with the one that you get, yeah. right? The problem with that is, if you just target Puma, Adidas, Nike, Reebok, yeah. You can do your research, you can find out about them, you can know where they sell, you can know the names of their products and stuff. And so when you're interviewed, you sound like you know a lot. Yeah. If you've applied to 200 companies, that's quite hard. Uh, yeah. But, you know, the realist in me says, tough, just get on with it. And sadly, it it's become a numbers game. There is absolutely definitely about something about being resilient and keeping going. Yeah. And it's not you, it's them, you know, because it typically is. They were looking for something else yeah, and, and you were really good, yeah. you were super bright, you did everything well and you just didn't get it. If you're going to write a covering letter, make it meaningful somehow, somehow. Mm -hmm. I do not believe you get the interview or not on the back of the cover letter. Unless the cover letter has got something really, you know, like, you know I've, I've just come back from climbing Mount Everest. Okay. And I'm a bit tired. You know, some, <laughs> no, no, I know, you, I, know, I know if you haven't, you can't, do, do you know what I mean? Make it different if you can. I know that's easy to say and difficult to do. The most creative one I ever had was when I was at Pentland is someone sent me their CV and it was in a box with stress balls in it. You know those Chinese stress balls that go ding, ding, ding. And the covering letter was, I bet you're really busy and a bit stressed. So I've sent you some stress balls. Now I interviewed that person yeah. in a heartbeat. Sorry. I didn't care who they were, I just met them. Mm -hmm. What I know doesn't quite work is just a standard cover letter with a standard CV because then you look like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So if it was Adidas, I, I might put my CV in a shoebox. Okay. And post that to them. No, the, the sign's a bit nutty, but you know, if it's McDonald's, I might put it in a McDonald's thing. I, I, it's 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 anything that shows you've you've had the nous just to try that little, little bit, bit more. Harder, and yeah. just being captain of the hockey team's not enough. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Because everyone says they're captain of the hockey team. You know, it's that kind of thing. The, the model I have looking at CVs, right, is simply, uh, it's scale, complexity, and track record, okay. right? So if I've got this thing, when I'm looking at a CV, I wanna know what's the scale of what they've done. So, so, so if you're a graduate and you haven't done much work, but you've been on a project team, it's interesting that your project had 20 people on it than two, mm. right? I want a sense of scale. If you've had a Saturday job, you know, uh, was, was it at Dixon's or was it at the corner shop? Uh, so think scale. The next is complexity, meaning the stuff that you've done, has, has it been dead easy or has it been quite difficult? Yeah. And now, again, if you've got nothing to say in a CV, but you've done essays and you've done, you've revised, try and tell me how complex your, your degree was. Mm. Was it easy or was it difficult? I want a sense of complexity. And then the track record bit is what have you done? get 2-1 or not, mm. um, bloody first time pass or not. That's, that's what I love. Most recruiters are much more traditional. You've yeah. got to have a covering letter and you've got to have a proper CV, mm. right? So I encourage everybody to do it the right way. 
But I would love to see a CV that was just one sheet of paper with maybe three circles on it and it would be my hedgehog model. This is what I'm best at. This is what I love doing. And this is why it would add value to you. I would read that and I'd interview them in a heartbeat. And there's not much you can do with that. You've got to fill the form into your best of your ability and cross your fingers, I, I think. There's not much else you can do, but, but I certainly would back it up. Mm, I would. Yeah. Rough rule of thumb, send it to the HR director and the chief exec, to both. Mm -hmm. There were loads of times at Pentland where the chief exec would drop in my office and say, I want you to meet that person. Because ah. he had just been intrigued by something that had landed on his desk. Okay, that's very good. To multiple know. touch points, right? Okay. Do the online thing and then multiple touch points. Find out if your mum and dad know anyone at Kodak, if you're applying to Kodak, and if they do, write to them. It, 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 the, the, the power of some sort of personal contact is really pow powerful. Yeah.